So in this screencast, I'm going to walk through the development of a script in Google Apps Script that takes a range of cells and has to use both for loops and if statements to process that data. And the problem that we're trying to solve is one of validating a set of weights for a weighted average. So we've got a set of exams, exam one, exam two, a paper, and a final exam. We have weights assigned to each of these, and we want to make sure that these weights are all between zero and one, and that they add up to one or 100%. And so we want a validation function here, which I called our valid weights, that should take as input this range of weights, and it should check whether each weight is between zero and one, and whether they add up to one, and it should return true if that is the case and false otherwise. So it's clearly broken at the moment. It's returning false when 10 plus 15 plus 25 plus 50 does actually equal 100. And they're all between you know 0 and 1 or 0 and 100%. So we'll have to fix this script. But that's the goal, is to develop a script that does that. So our valid weights will be the name of our function. And it's going to take a range of values Okay, so let's go over here to the script. And I've got sort of a stub that at the moment just returns false, so it doesn't do anything very interesting. Uh, so we say we have a function. The name of the function is our valid weights. And it takes a single argument, because if we go back over to the spreadsheet, this is being handed a single argument, which is the range of values. Uh, and so I'm calling that single argument weights here in this example. And as a reminder, weights is going to be an array of arrays. So in Google Script, when we pass in a range, that range comes in as an array of arrays. In this case, because our array is just this row of cells, we're going to have one row and n columns. In this case example, it's got four columns, but if we add or remove columns from the weight section, uh, then that would grow and shrink. So from the example before, that row, that array of rays would look like this. The outer square brackets are the outer array. The inner square brackets are the inner array. The inner array has four items, 0.1, 0.15, 0.25, and 0.5. And to access the ith weight, we're going to use weights 0, 1. The 0 in square brackets is giving us the first, and in this case, only row. And the square bracket i is saying we want the ith element from the inner array. So one way to think about this is square brackets where the first number is the row and then the second number in square brackets is the column and since we only have one row the row number is always zero and the column will be i okay <clears throat> so if that's confusing it's definitely something to ask questions about because uh, there'll be much more use of that before we're done and so uh, it's a definite thing to make sure you're clear on okay so we want to confirm that all the weights are between 0 and 1 and that they add up to 1. I'm going to start with like a really simple subset of the problem. This is a common approach in programming is divide the problem up, divide and conquer, divide the problem up into little manageable pieces and try to work on the pieces. And sometimes by doing that, you'll also see the pattern. If there is a larger pattern, it'll become more apparent. And then there are ways that you can capitalize on that pattern later on. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's just think about the very first weight. And all we're going to care about is, is it between 0 and 1? So we're going to ignore all the other weights. And we're going to ignore the requirement that they add up to 1. We're just going to look at the very first weight and make sure it's between 0 and 1. Okay? So I'm going to say var w equals weights 0, 1. Um, oops, semicolon. 
So in a little note, W is the first weight. So now I have the first weight and I want to confirm that the first weight is between zero and one. So that's going to require an if. I'm asking a question. Is this weight, does it have a certain property? And if it does, I'm going to return true. And if it doesn't, I'm going to return false. So I'm going to say if w, well, what's the property I want? I really want that 0 is less than or equal to, dip, less than or equal to w and 2 ampersands in JavaScript, w less than or equal to 1. So here I'm saying that both these two things have to be true, that 0 is less than or equal to w and that w is less than or equal to 1. So if both of those things are true, then I want to return true. Ah, can't type. If that wasn't the case, then I want to return false. Ah. Okay. So, and then we'll get rid of this return false down here. That was just a stub so that it returned something um, earlier. So this should look at the very first weight, check that it's in the right range, if it is, return true, otherwise return false. So that hopefully will correctly check the first weight, won't pay any attention to the others, it won't try to add them up, but hopefully it'll check the first right weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and save, and then we'll head over here and see if that seems to be working. So it says true. Um, now, if I say minus 10%, it says true. That's a problem. If I say 110%, it says true. Oh, just a sec. Why is that? Um, oh, this isn't the first weight. I That's the second weight. Um, so I did my indexing wrong. Somehow I decided it. JavaScript counts from one, and JavaScript totally counts from zero. So that's why that didn't work. So if I change that back to a zero, which it should have been all along, then if we come back here, 10% is true, minus 10% is false, and 110% is false, and zero is okay, and 100 is okay, but 101 is not okay. Good. So that seems to be doing the right thing for the first weight. So now if we head back over here, what if we want to care about the second weight? Well, we actually saw me, because of my little mistake, uh, I actually provided a hint as to what the second one was, which is if we copy and paste that and just replace this with a, with a one, and replace this comment to say w is the second weight, then that should be heading in the right direction. It won't actually work, but it'll be, you know, heading in the right direction. This is certainly getting us the second weight. It is then comparing uh, that that weight is in the right range, um, but we're going to find there's going to be a couple of issues that we're going to have to resolve. So let's head back over here. Let's make sure that we haven't broken this. That seems to still be working fine. So now let's make this minus 15%. And we got true, and that's not good. And 115%, and we still get true. And what, why is that happening? Well, if we come back and look at our spreadsheet, our, our script, so what are we saying? We're, we're getting the first weight, which was 10%, 0.1. And we're saying, is it between 0 and 1? Yes, it is. And then what do we do? We return true. Well, there's the problem. When we see a return statement, it's going to return immediately. It'll just end everything. The function will stop doing any work. Anything below this return, any of this stuff down here, none of it gets done. Okay, so returning here is too aggressive. 
And the problem, if we think about it, if we're checking several values for whether they're legal, knowing that the first one is legal doesn't mean we're done. We still have to check all the other ones and make sure they're legal too. Okay. If any one of them is not legal, if we find one that doesn't work, then we could quit. We could say, no, it's not a good batch. But if we find one that works, that doesn't really tell us if the whole batch is good. It just tells us we have to go on to the next one. And so this return here is too early. It's stopping right away uh, and sending true back. And we haven't looked at the second wait yet. So that's really not going to work. So what we have to do instead is if this is bad, then we want to return false. Otherwise, we just want to keep going. We don't want to actually return anything. We want to look at the next value. So what I'm going to do, and this is a little crazy, but I'm going to negate this test. So an explanation mark, or sometimes called a bang in computer science, in front of a logical expression flips that expression. So if the value of the expression was true, the bang is going to give us a false. And if the value of the expression was false, the bang is going to give us true. So this will be true. This whole thing will be true if w is less than 0 or w is bigger than 1, if w is outside the legal range. Okay. And so if that's the case, I want to return false. And otherwise, I just want to keep going. So this is saying... If this W is bad, return false. If it's okay, we got to go look at the next one and see if the next one's okay. And if the next one's legal, then we return true because we looked at both of the two we we're going to look at. We're only looking at two at the moment. Otherwise, if th this one was bad, we want to return false. So let's see if that works. So we're going to save. We'll come back here. Minus 10. Still breaks things, 110. Still breaks things, minus 15. Hey, we got a false, that's good. 115, hey, we got a false. Go back to 15, and we got a true. Okay, so we appear to be checking the first two correctly. So, if we head back over, well, let's do the third. Copy and paste. In general, like, copy and paste is sort of seen as a bad idea in a lot of programming, it can be a good way to discover solutions. It often doesn't lead to pretty solutions, and you often have to do some cleanup afterwards, but it can actually be a great way to find a solution um, because it allows us to work up to the solution incrementally in useful ways. So let's see, we're gonna change this to third and third. Now, here again, we got this problem that if this sees that this W is okay, it's going to return true, and we'll never get down here and check this one. So really, we're going to want to copy this piece. This is actually the way we want this second guy to look. Boom. So now we check the first weight. If it's bad, we return false. We check the second weight. If it's bad, we return false. We check the third weight. And to keep things consistent, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this as well. And then at the end, I'm just going to say, say return true. So now we're checking the first weight. If it's okay, we return false. Or if it's not okay, we return false. I check the second weight. If it's not okay, we return false. I check the third weight. If it's not okay, we return false. If we get through all of those, then that means this was okay, and this was okay, and this was okay, and then we return true. So if we save that and head over, we should find, hopefully, that this third one now works. 125 should break things. It does. 25 is still good. So we seem to be in pretty good shape. We could go back and check the first one quickly and make sure it seems to still be checked. And then we can check the second one quickly. It does also seem to still be checked correctly. So it looks like we're dealing with the first three okay. So we're dealing with these three. OK. 
Okay. Now at this point, the pattern is pretty clear. And one nice thing about having these all look the same is it makes it easier now to copy and paste to get the fourth one. So fourth way, and we'll put a three there. And now we should actually deal with all three, all four. So if the first one's bad, we return false and we're done. If the second one's bad, we return false and we're done. If the third one's bad, we return false and we're done. If the fourth one's bad, we return false and we're done. Otherwise, we've got through all of those things, then we can return true. Boom, life is good. So let's see if that works. So if we come over here and let's change our final weight to minus 50%, and that does indeed break things, and 150% breaks things 50% again is good just for fun we'll make that one minus 15 and that's false so I think we're in good shape so I think we have successfully checked that the four weights in the range weights 0 0 weights 0 1 weight 0 2 and weight 0 3 are all in the range between 0 and 1 and if any one of them is not, we return false and we quit because we don't have to check anymore. We found the bad apple. We're done. If all the apples are good, then we return true, saying everything's swell. Okay. Now, there are two significant problems with this. The first is it's repetitious, right? This is the same as this, is the same as this, is the same as this. And repetition is the evil of programming. It's a very bad thing. It leads to all kinds of problems. Um, and so we don't like repetition. Repetition is bad. Okay. That's one problem. The other problem is this is fixed. It's limited to exactly four values. If we were to go into this spreadsheet and add another exam or remove the paper, then this would all break because it's assuming we have exactly four values in the range and we'd only have three values or we'd have five values and that would be bad. So this isn't very flexible. It doesn't scale well as we change things and it's repetitious, so we don't like it. So let's focus on the repetition part because that hints it to where, where we can fix things. And if we look at each of these blocks, they are identical with one exception. And the one exception is the value in the second position when we extract the weight. Everything else is the same, but that number goes from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. It's a very common pattern in programming where you have a block of code that is identical except for one thing that counts up or counts down, um, but some sort of index is changing as you go through. And that's exactly what we've got here. We want to deal with the first one, and then we want to deal with the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one. And so this index is going 0, 1, 2, 3. When that happens, the thing to think about is for loops. For loops are meant exactly for this situation. And so we want to have a loop that says we want to start with 0 and then have 1 and then have 2 and then have 3. So we want a for loop, 4, and we're going to have an index variable, which I'm going to call i, but we could have called anything we wanted, just a name. And we need to give it an initial value, which we'll get to in a second. We need to say how far up it goes. We'll fix that in a second. And we need to say, like, how is it going to increment? And we know we want to go up by one every time, so I'll just put that part in right now. Um, and then we're going to move. Oops, ah, didn't mean to put a one there. I'm going to scoot these guys over so they're indented nicely inside the for loop. So this says we're going to create some variable i. We're going to start it at some value. And then we're going to add one to i each time through until we hit some limit okay and so we can actually look at our example here and figure out what these question marks are and 
our example sort of showed us this i equals i plus one part because we knew we went from zero to one to two to three so we wanted to add one to our index every time well what's the first value of our index it's going to be zero so we need to start off with zero okay. and then how far up do we go well we want to go up to three so we go up to three but not four so we want to say i is less than four we could also say i is less than or equal to three there's some reasons which will become clear in a little bit why i prefer the i less than four approach to the problem so we're going to say i starts as zero we're going to keep going as long as i is less than four so that's going to give us zero one two three but not four because four is not less than four and we'll add one each time so add one to zero get one is one less than four yes do it add one to four we get two is two less than four yes do it add one to two get three is three less than four yes do this add one to three get four is four less than four no we're done so this loop will do all of these cases. Well, it won't yet, because right now we haven't changed this yet. This is still zero every time. We change that to an I, then this will be zero the first time, then it'll be one, which is this part, so we don't need this part anymore. And then it'll be two, which is this part, so we don't need this part anymore. And then it'll be three, and that's this part, so we don't need this part anymore. Okay. So that will do all four of those things in one loop. Okay. Now this comment's broken because this is no longer the first weight. W is the ith weight. Okay. So we should say, you know, this is going to be the ith weight where I is zero and then one and then two and three and four. And for each one of those weights, we'll check and see, is it legal? If it's not legal, right, that's the negation, then we'll return false. Otherwise, we'll continue on and check the next one. And if we get through all of that and everybody's been okay, then we'll return true and we should be good. So let's see if that actually works. So we'll save and we'll head over here. And so we'll say minus 10%. And yes, that breaks things 110%. And that breaks things put it back to 10 and we should be okay and then minus 15 and 115 well 100, 1150 would work too and that breaks things minus 25 uh, 120 uh, 125 breaks things put 25 back and we're fine minus 50 150 yep 50 and yeah so that means we have checked they're all in the right range we do that checking just fine so that's great now we've got another piece of this which is we have to check that the total the sum equals one okay is a hundred percent and so we're going to have to add up the total here. Now we can actually conveniently do that in the while in the for loop because we're, we're touching all the weights here. We get every weight out one at a time and look at it. So we could add them to a running total as we look at them. So we could have a variable total. And that's just a name I'm making up. It could be, we could call it Fred be a bad name, but we could call it Fred. And then for each weight, we can add up, add that weight to total. So we can say, hey, total is total plus W. So W is the ith weight. We're going to add the ith weight into total here. Now, so far that hasn't checked anything. It's added them up, but it hasn't actually checked that the total is one you might be tempted to check that right here but that's actually the wrong place because that's that would check as we're adding them up as we're going down the list and adding them up 
And it's only going to be one after we get through them all, right? If we were uh, going down the list and adding them, we wouldn't want to check that the sum was one at every point as we go down the list. We only want to check that when we get to the very end. And so we want to wait till we finish the for loop. We've gotten all the way through all of this. Then we would want to check if total equals one. And in JavaScript, if we're comparing equality, it's two equal signs. Not obvious, but that's the historical reality. So if the total is one, then we can return true. Otherwise, oops, I left my curly brace off. Boop. Otherwise, return false. Boom. So this will add them all up as we go through them. And then when we're all done, we want to check, is the total one? If it is, we return true, otherwise return false. It's also important to remember that we would have returned false early if any of the weights had been negative or above one. So if we found a bad apple, we would have returned false and left, in which case we don't even have to check the total. Right? If one of the weights is minus 37, we don't have to check the total anymore. So it only, we only have to check the total if all the apples were good, then we need to say, oh, okay, what, what did they add up to? Did they add up to one? Great. If they didn't, bad. Okay. So we'll save that and come over here. And uh, so now let's change 50 to 40. If I change 50 to 40, all the weights will be individually legal, but the total will be wrong, and this should turn to false. And it is! Yay! And if I change it to like 51, so it's one too big, we should still get false. Huzzah! And if I change it to exactly 50, then we're back to true. Okay? So that actually does check the total, and it checks all of the individual weights. So that actually gets us where we want to go. There's one thing I want to change. And then we'll be finished. There's one place here where we've assumed there's exactly four weights, exactly four columns here. And again, that doesn't scale well. We might want to remove a column or add a column. And this won't work if we do that. So where have we assumed four? We've assumed four right here. That's the one place where we assumed that we had exactly four. So rather than four there, what we really want to know is how wide is this row? How many elements does that row have? And the way we get that is we first say weights zero, and that's the first row. That's the thing that has the four elements in it right now, but might have five or might have three. And we want to know how many things do you have in you? And in JavaScript, you can ask an array, how big are you? How many things do you have? By saying dot length at the end of the array. So this expression is going to equal four in our example. But if we remove a column, it'll turn into three. And if we add two columns, it'll turn into six. Or add three columns, it'll turn into seven. Or a million and twelve, depends on how many columns we add. Um, so this will tell us exactly how many items there were in that in the width of that range that we handed it and so that will allow this to change from fewer to greater to fewer again columns as we add and remove them so let's go see if that actually worked save come over here well at the moment there's no way to tell so why don't we actually remove a column so let's say the paper is gone. Delete that column. Boom. Now, this is false because the weights add up to 75%. So we would need to add 25% somewhere to make things balance. Just arbitrarily, I'm going to make the first exam 35%. So I'll add the 25% there. And boom. 
our weights are valid. We get a true there. So it is doing the right thing even with the shortened set of um, values, weights. So I'm going to try to undo that. See if I can undo the remove column. So undo that and undo the remove column. Let's instead add a second column. Uh, yet another com column. It's not a second column, a fifth column. So we'll say wait exam three. Now notice here this is false because this isn't a numeric value. Now if I said 0%, that would actually work. No, that wouldn't work. Why are you unhappy? Um, A -A -T -E -A. Oh, no. Oh, I've got 2% signs. That's my problem. I'm a dope. So now, yay, okay. It's happy again. Um, but if I say this exam actually counts for something, say 10%, then I'm going to have 110% here, and this is false. So it's actually, it did the adding up and it said, oh, you don't add up right. So I got 10% too much. So let's make this 10%, that gets rid of five of the extra percent. And we'll make this 20% and now everything's good. So um, I could add this column and the weights are all legal. They're between zero and one or zero and hundred percent and they add up to 100%, and so we get an okay value there. So I think that puts this script in pretty good shape. Um, we removed that nasty bit of repetition, and we do not depend on assuming a particular number of columns. Um, we check that there are no weights that are not between zero and one, and if any are broken, we return false. And while we're there, we actually add everything up. And at the end, we check to see if the total is one. If it is, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. So hopefully that helps some. Uh, certainly let me know if you've got any questions. Thanks a lot.